Site plan. Here's the site. Here's the site. It should not. Who has any questions while following these proceedings? The applicant is available in the audience if you have any questions, and staff is available for questions. Okay, Mr. Mills, anyone from the applicant team wants to add any? I, th I think we're good. I think this tonight covered most of what we needed. Um, the alterations are going to be minor, they're going to be to the interior of the building. We may have to change out windows to get egress, but we would they would be in the same locations as the windows that are there now. So. Other than that, it's mostly, it's all interior. Some landscaping out back. Okay, thank a 22 you. 22-bed, what we're looking at is a 22-bed facility. And now we will open it for the public comments. 
If there's anybody attending in person who would like to make a public comment on this item, please raise your hand. Seeing no hands, there's no public comment. Okay, and I don't have any comment also. It's a great to see the reuse of the vacant building in a great area, and I know the use will not add any additional traffic because those people are staying there won't be able to drive. I will approve it also with the e-signature, <laughs> so you will have the resolution uh, marked or emailed to you when it is ready. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And just to let everyone know, again, this decision is appealable, and the deadline is February 26. 29. 29. Okay. Anyway, thank you. And, thank you. Thank Sorry, you. that is the 26th. Shoot, oh, that is, is the 26th. 26? Okay. That is the 26th. Dang it. And we will go on the second item. This is for a public meeting for coffee park storage, another conditional use permit for a property located at 3240 Coffee Lane. Use permit CUP 21-101 and senior planner Christina Tunions again will go over it. Thank you, Ms. Shikali. This is another um, uh, um, another project um, called Coffee Park Self Storage Offsite Parking. Very straightforward project. It's a minor use permit to allow 25 existing parking spaces at 3300 Coffee Lane to be used for the proposed. Coffee Park Self Storage Project at 3282 and 3242 Coffee Lane. This is an aerial showing the project area, which includes the proposed parking area, which is to the, it's a, a little strip to the north of that green area, and then the Coffee Park uh, Storage Facility that's uh, that was approved already. So here's the project site um, with Coffee Park Self Storage that. Um, slightly dashed rectangle above the green is where the proposed parking will be, which is off-site of where the coffee park self-storage will be. Here's a closer aerial showing where the 25 off-site parking spaces will be located just north um, of that vacant lot, which will eventually be coffee park self-storage. Um, here's a street view of coffee lane. And just to give you a brief overview, um, December 19, 2019 concept review application was submitted and was withdrawn um, in favor of a de design review application. Um, a formal application was submitted September 2020. Uh, the applicant submitted a conditional use permit for off-site parking in December 22, 2021. Uh, staff deemed that both applications complete on July 27, 2023. Mm -hmm. On December 21st, 2023, the zoning administrator adopted a zoning interpretation. 23-001 clarifying the required entitlement for off-site parking is a minor use permit, not a major. Here's a general plan um, and zoning um, diagram showing that the whole area, surrounding areas are light industrial, but for the little bit of residential to the north uh, west. And it shows the offsite parking location. And here's the zoning, it's IL, light industrial. Again, this is a site plan showing the uh, parking spaces to the north, which I believe are already paved and striped. Um, and then there are some findings um, that the, has to be designed to meet city standards. Um, and there should be, it's required to have a rec recorded covenant running with the land recorded by the owner of the parking facility, guaranteeing that the required parking will be maintained exclusively for the use or activities served during the duration of use or activity. That agreement has already been recorded. And then this project qualifies for a class 32 exemption per CEQA um, section 15332 as an infill um, exemption for development projects. There are no un unresolved issues. Uh, staff did not receive any comments, questions, or concerns from the public when the notice went out. And with that, uh, the s staff is recommending um, that the zoning administrator approve a use permit to allow 25 off-site parking spaces at 330 Coffee Lane for Coffee Park self-storage. 
Again, here's my contact information if anybody has any questions following this meeting. And staff is available for any questions. And for the studios, anyone from the applicant can be here. Do you? No. Yeah. No. You don't have anything to add? Nothing to add, thank you. Okay. I, I will ask you actually a question. I was there yesterday. Are you going to do restriping there? Because I noticed some of them are fading away. Yes. Okay. Do, do, do you want, an, do you think we should add a condition that says make sure they are restriped and meet the current zoning code requirements? I think have that. Okay, so just to be clear, we will add that condition. Mm -hmm. And now I will open it to the public, the recording secretary. If there is a member of the public in person who'd like to make a comment, please raise your hand. Nice. Zoning Administrator, there are no comments. Okay, we will close it and I remember this project, it started, I was involved with it too at some point. <laughs> so I'm pretty familiar. I'm glad to see it's coming to an end. So I hope you will start constructing it. And I have no questions or issues with it also. I will approve it. So you will also receive your resolution soon after a bit time. I appreciate your patience. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. Maya, can we take a break in between projects so we can get the audio straightened out? Yeah, I can take a break right now. We can take a break. Bit more, please. Yeah. I just want to make sure there is no issue with the audio. <laughs> Can we be yeah. muted, please? <laughs> I know. <laughs>
Hello, can you hear me? Hey, I can hear you. I can hear you guys, but I think there's a echo. We can hear you too. Okay. Okay. Um, I can give my presentation. Uh, I just hear an echo when you on your end when you guys speak. Mike. Mike, 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 can you hear me now? Yeah, that sounds great, Monet. There's no echo. Mike, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Do you hear any echo? No echo. Perfect. So I will go from here. Turn them all the way up. And okay. Okay. Apologies about the technology, but we will move forward with the next item. And the next, next item on the list is 6.3 public meeting pool and ramada located at 3565 Kirk Ridge Street. This is a hillside development permit. File number is HDP 22-015. And the presenter is Mike Jansik, our contract planner. Mike, can you go ahead and give your presentation? Yes, zoning administrator, and thank you for the introduction. Um, I'll present the Mike, hillside Mike. development permit. Mike, can you just 35... give a second? Mike, let's sure. see if we can share the screen so you can we have you can have your presentation. Just give us a minute. Okay. We can hear you from laptop, but let's see if we can share your presentation on the screen. You should be able to share the screen now. Okay, Mike, can you go ahead and share your screen? Sure. Can you see it? Yes, thank you. Oh, okay, great. So I'll present the Hillside Development Permit for 3565 Kirkbridge. This is Hillside Development Permit number 22015. Um, the proposal is um, to um, construct a pool, ramada, uh, pergola, and associated site improvements. Um, and this is subject to um, zoning administrator review as um, an addition to a single family development on a, a site with 10% or greater slope. And the addition is 10% um, or more of floor area. And that includes um, outdoor um, porches and decks. Here's um, an aerial of the project location. Um, the site is located within the Altruria Heights planned development, which was adopted in 1994. Um, these are approximately quarter acre lots. Um, unfortunately, these homes are fire rebuilds for, um, as a result of the 2017 Tubbs fire. Um, it's the second house in, there's Kirkridge and there's Ultraria. There's also open space uh, to the rear of the site. Um, here's an oblique aerial. Um, most of the uh, the vast majority of the improvements are in the rear yard. Um, the rear yard was um, previously graded um, for from the original house, and there was a pool. Um, this new pool would be a different design. Um, most of the backyard uh, is 
on a slope that's consistent, similar to the um, the building pad, so it's less than 10% slope. Um, and then the site um, gets steeper um, within 30 feet or so of the, the back of the site, the rear property line. Um, there's also three existing trees on site. There's no trees proposed for removal with this project. Uh, you can also see neighboring properties uh, to this is the north, which is an uphill um, pad, and then the pads step down, and this is the property, the corner lot to the south, which is the downhill property. Uh, it's It has low density residential general plan land use designation, and again, it's in the, it's in PD 72001J. Here's the site plan. Um, the Here's the location of the new pool and the new Ramada structure. There'd also be a new pergola, new decking, um, resurfaced side, um, side yard walks. Mike, new, well, um, Mike can, okay, there you go. We were waiting for the site plan. It showed up right now. Go ahead. Okay, must be a, a lag. Yeah. So there's um, the most of the site improvements are in the rear yard, the pool, the ramada. There's a uh, new decking, new pergola, the sidewalks, um, the side yard walkways. I should say are uh, would be resurfaced, but are existing. Be a new um, pool equipment storage on the side, the house. Um. These retaining walls are existing. Um, there would be two new retaining walls um, proposed and new timber steps. And again, all the trees would be um, protected. Um, the, the project would meet this 15 foot side yard hillside setback. Um, the house does not because it's built to the, originally was built to the PD setback standards um, and was a, a fire rebuild. So the um, the new improvements would be um, subject to the more restrictive hillside setback. Um, the grading is generally limited to immediately uh, the immediate footprint of the improvements. And um, it everything is on the flattest portion of the site, except for the three foot, three and a half foot um, wide timber steps with decomposed granite landings, um, which go down to the steepest part of the, the lot. And there'd also be a um, new trench drain, drain, trench drains installed in the um, below the deck, uh, which would tie into the existing um, stormwater um, inlets. Um, and the new proposed lot coverage would be 25% where 40 is allowed. Um, here's an elevation of the Ramada. Um, it's open on two sides. It would be unconditioned and uninhabitable space. Um, the stone veneer and the siding would match the existing house. Um, the low side is eight feet. The high side is 11 feet. Um, it, the shed roof is oriented such that the low side is closer to the uphill neighbor. And so it works with the, the stepped um, pad elevations and the existing um, terrain out there and would effectively reduce um, the visibility of the structure from, from the neighboring um, property. Um, one public comment was received um, as um, during the public notice period and the comment um, shared concerns from the downhill property to the south um, regarding drainage and the proposed um, relocation of the existing fence along that property line. Um, the, I already explained the, the drainage um, plan, which would, uh, which would manage any runoff from new impervious um, surfaces and then would also be subject to uh, building permit review. Um, the existing fence, um, which if you go back to the site plan, is located, um, it varies, but roughly two to three feet off of the property line. It's noted as um, being proposed to uh, be shifted to the shared property line. And after the public comment, it's come to staff's attention that there's a retaining wall located there. And so that fence um, relocation to the property line would not be approvable. 
as it would, um, the measurement would be taken from the low side of the wall. And then that would mean the fence is um, exceeding the maximum height requirements. So um, staff is recommending a condition of approval that would require the applicant to revise the project drawings at the time of building permit submittal to remove the proposed um, fence relocation. Um, and that's what the understanding that um, it, any, any future alterations to that fence would need to be in compliance with um, the zoning code fence standards and um, also any, any fence um, over seven feet would need a building permit. Um, I'll just also add that um, I think it the applicant can speak to um, their design intent. And I, I think um, the zoning administrator should consider um, that, this, that the applicant continue to work with staff and the neighbor to find um, a, the best possible solution for both properties um, in regard to any future fence alterations at that location. Um, staff is able, so with the condition to uh, remove the pro proposed fence relocation, um, staff is able to make all the applicable findings to the remainder of the, the scope of work. And I won't, I tried to incorporate those aspects into the project description in my previous slides, but in summary, um, the project meets all the PD development standards, including lot coverage, um, the Ramada meets all the accessory structure specific standards, including height. Um, the proposed project is on the flash portion of the lot. The roof forms are oriented towards the interior of the lot, which reduces the visibility to the uphill property. And the structure will provide um, um, earth tone materials and natural stone materials. Um, the project is exempt and eligible for a categorical exemption pursuant to CEQA. Um, it's, it would be a class one and a class three um, categorical exemptions. Um, class one is for existing facilities and class three is for conversion, new construction or conversion of small structures. The, um, the project consists of an addition of less than 10,000 square feet. And um, the new construction uh, and small structures um, and accessory structures um, are proposed, including the pool, the armada, the retaining wall, and the pergola. And with that, staff recommends that the zoning administrator approve the hillside development permit to allow the pool, the armada, and associated site improvements for the property located at 3565 Kirkridge and subject to the condition of approval to um, revise the plan to remove the proposal to shift the southern fence to the existing property line. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. And any member of the applicant team who wants to add any additional comments? No, Mike did. Well, my name is Seth Gilly, uh, applicant, and I have the property owner here too, Jason Johnson. Um, no, Mike did well. Um, regarding the fence, we are will propose not moving the fence and keeping that as existing. Um, so that should um, or any of those concerns for the neighbor uh, regarding that issue. Okay. And now I will open it for the public comments. If there's anybody attending in person who'd like to make a comment, go ahead and raise your hand. I see no public comments. Thank you, Mark. And I was there yesterday. I was doing a site visit. That creek there is screening all the houses in that area. It's a great location. It's a close public oh, I will close a public comment right now. Thank you, Mark. I was there. I noticed that lots of trees are coming back. Glad to see that. I hope you will add more landscaping also. Lots of trees were burned there. And yeah, I don't have any comments or additional conditions. And you address the fence comments. I appreciate that. With that, I will approve it. And you should get your signed resolution. Hopefully this week after Mark has it. Thank you. And I will go to the next item. Do you want to take a break? Is there anything you want to fix, Mark, or is all good? Yes, I do. Okay. So I will go to the next item. The camera is turned off here. Is that okay? Oh, I don't So item 6.4, another public meeting. 
This is for a fence located at 2932 West Creek Lane, minor conditional use permit, file number CUP 23-039 and project planner Bizla Sachnur will go over the project. Good morning, everyone. The project before you is the Fong Residential Fence. It is a minor, oh, one second. Okay. It is a minor conditional use permit application um, to, to legalize the existing residential fence that was constructed in the rear and exterior side setback without the benefit of permits. Um, the fence is made up of six feet and 10 inches of solid wood, 9.5 inches of lattice, and there are two inch tall solar caps that sit flush on top of the fence. Um, here is an aerial view of the site, and you can see that the location of the fence is circled. Um, the fence is in the same location as the previous fence that was originally constructed um, as a part of the subdivision development. And here is a neighborhood context map. The general plan land use designation for this property is low density residential and the zoning is PD 9504. Here you can see the fence design. Um, it is in total seven feet and nine and a half inches. Staff is able to make all of the required findings for a minor conditional use permit. Um, I would like to note that there have been edits made to my resolution um, that were added to the agenda this morning, I believe. Or, oh, okay. Um, there are edits that were uh, made to my resolution. Um, so I will go over those. On finding number three, um, the resolution originally stated that the fence is entirely clear of the required driveway vision triangle and does not affect pedestrian or vehicular traffic. Um, this has been removed. The fence is actually in the driveway vision triangle, but it's in the same location as uh, the original fence and in a similar location as fences on other properties in the vicinity. Um, again, in finding number two for the additional fence height, it originally stated that the fence is located outside of the required vision triangle and in no way affects pedestrians or vehicles. Um, and this has been removed and changed to say that the fence is designed to minimize site obstruction for vehicles, cyclists, and pedestrians. Um, overall, staff is able to make the required findings for a minor conditional use permit as the fence is located uh, at the property line on the sides and rear and is uh, uh, in the same location as the original and of a common design similar to those in the surrounding area. And staff is also able to support the required findings for additional fence height. Um, the purpose of the additional fence height is to provide more privacy and safety for this corner lot property and not allowing the fence to encroach into the side corner setback would deny the property owner privileges, would deny the property owner privileges enjoyed by other property owners in the vicinity and within the same zoning district. This project is categorically exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act. Uh, it is eligible for a class three exemption as it is the construction of an accessory structure. There are no unresolved issues as a result of staff review. At the time of making this presentation, no public comment had been received. However, earlier this week, I received a phone call from a neighbor in support of the project um, and commenting um, on why it is required to have uh, required to go through the minor conditional use permit process when the fence is of a similar height and design to others in the neighborhood. It is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a minor conditional use permit to allow additional fence height at 2932 West Creek Lane. And for any questions or comments, this is my contact information. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. And does that have any comments? We don't have any comments. <laughs> okay, and I will open it for the public comments. The courting secretary. If there's anybody attending in person who'd like to. 
there are no public comments. And I will close the public comments. And I was there also yesterday. I noticed there are lots of fences higher than six or seven foot, and some maybe 10 within that area. Not sure if all of them got the right permit, building permit, but any fence higher than seven foot would require a building permit. I don't have any concern or issues. I know you need your privacy. I will also sign this one up and approve it. Thank you. And I will go to the next and last item on the list. This is public meeting for the project located on 5th Street, Tattoo Studio. The address is 531 5th Street. This is a minor conditional use permit. File number is CUP 23-071. And the project planner, Christina Tumians, will go over the presentation. All right, back again. Um, thank you, Ms. Shaikali. Let me share my screen. So um, I'm filling in for uh, city planner, Suzanne Hartman, who cannot be here today. And this is Fifth Street Tattoo, CUP 23-071. It is a proposed tattoo um, studio at 531 Fifth Street. Uh, they are proposing four employees and hours of operation would be Tuesday through Saturday from noon until eight. Um, they accept walk-ins and the proposed maximum amount of clients per day would probably be about 10. It's located in the downtown between Mendocino and B Street, just south of Ross, an existing building, existing tenant space. There's a close-up of that. It fronts onto Fifth Street. There is shared parking in the rear. Uh, general plan and land use is core mixed use or CMU. Zoning district is CMU DSA, core mixed use. DSA stands for downtown uh, station area plan. And here you can see uh, the red circle shows the tenant space. Um, they would take over a part of that building for the tattoo studio and a close up of the storefront. Here's a floor plan showing um, what it would look like once it's up and running. So showing the four tattoo stations and the lobby and rear employee area. Now the proposed use is allowed within this zoning district, the CMU zoning district, and complies with all other applicable provisions of this code and city code. It's consistent with the general plan and the downtown station area plan. The design, location, size, and operating characteristics are compatible with the existing and future land uses in the vicinity. Um, the site is physically suitable for the type of use that's proposed. Um, and granting the permit would not constitute a nuisance, uh, given that you know, there's adequate parking, it's in the downtown, the hours are within acceptable range. The project is categorically exempt from CEQA, First section 15301. There are no unresolved issues as a result um, of staff review. No public comments were received. Uh, with that, staff is recommending that uh, the zoning administrator by resolution approve minor use permit for a tattoo studio located at 531 Fifth Street. And here is Suzanne's contact information uh, if you have any questions um, after today, after today's action. Staff is available for questions. Any comments? No comments, no questions. Okay. Anyone from the public would provide comments? We have nobody here except for the applicant team, so we have no public comments. Great. And I will close the public comments. I have no concerns or comments about this project. We have similar users in downtown, and I will approve also this use. And you will receive your resolution too after I sign it. And with that, all the items today, they have a deadline appeal, which is February 26. And this meeting of the zoning administrator is now adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your patience.